By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with my mono blue deck against a mono green build. And we've been seeing a lot of green on the channel lately. Um, and this build, again, is a little bit different than the others we've seen so far. So I'm starting here with an Ivory Tower. My opponent has started with a Soul Ring and now is tapping for playing an Urnum Jinn. So that's a 4-5 creature from Arabian Nights. Very strong card. At least I'm gaining a little bit of life from the Ivory Tower. Let's see what I can do. And I'm playing a Library of Alexandria. Great combination here with the Ivory Tower. But, okay, there's the Ice Storm. So that's a Goner. And there's the first swing of the Urnum, and I'm going down to 18 life. Going back to 20 again with that Ivory. Let's see what I can do to stop the Urnum. Playing a Maze of If. And passing turn. Activating the Maze here, sending back the Urnum, Jin. Oh, that's an aggressive play here, playing a Hurricane. Uh, four, so that means we both lose four life here and we're both on 16, but I'm gaining life from the tower going back to 18. And an interesting play here because, you know, I could have had some flyers, which I don't in this deck. So it turned out to be a good decision here and there it is. The game is kind of stuck, which I really don't mind because I just want to gain life, rebuild that buffer, and I'm now on 22 already. So that Maze of If is really protecting me here, which is great. And I'm just passing turn, having fun in my tower. And there's a Crawl Worm. How cool is this? A beta. I believe it's a beta Crawl Worm. Very cool. Very cool creature. So that means next turn he can swing with an Urnum Jin and a Crawl Worm coming my way. But okay playing a power sink. I really feel kind of bad playing this power sink. I mean, I had to do it, but you don't want to do it because it's, it's such a beautiful card and such a... You don't see it that often. You don't play against it that often. Right, I'm playing my second desert here. Still gaining life from my tower and playing a Felwar Stone. And I'm wondering if he's going to strip my Maze of If. And there he goes. And he's swinging in with four. Being able to deal some damage here. Still have a pretty high life total. Playing a Giant Growth. Play, playing a Berserk. Wow, this is so cool. And I have to counter the Berserk. Playing another Berserk. Awesome. So that means it's 14 damage. 14 damage. And I'm down to 7 life. So can you imagine how much damage uh, Bjorn has actually already done? Uh, because I've, I've gained so much life from the Ivory Towers. This is insane. Playing a Brain Geyser here, which is great. Refilling my hand, activating that Ivory Tower again. Um, because obviously countering does mean that you have less cards in your hand. And thus deactivating the Ivory Tower yourself. Um, and I wonder how much fuel uh, Bjorn still has. He's playing the Elves of Deep Shadow. I love that art. It's really, if you don't know the card, look it up. Um, and see the art like kind of blown up in your face is beautiful art um, And there's there it is. There's Timmy. There's the prodigal sorcerer. So I have four of those in this deck and they work great with the um, With the deserts But there is a force of nature. Uh oh Can I counter the force of nature? I cannot. Okay. So I'm gaining three life, but that force of nature is a big problem here. It's no longer a big problem. Playing another Maze of If, and Maze of If is no longer restricted, and in a deck like this one, it's very helpful. Playing a clone over my Prodigal Sorcerer here. That means that I can start um, the pinging a little bit. And first decide to kill his Elves of Deep Shadow here. And this is perfect. This is the game I want to play. Gain life from the Ivory Tower. And having that Maze of If to protect me and just slowly ping and then counter away his threats. Playing another clone, having three Prodigal Sorcerers on the field right now. Pinging for two. Going to 16 here. 
And my opponent is kind of stuck because I'm playing a Simbad here, trying to find even more cards. He's kind of stuck because he has to pay that upkeep cost. If he doesn't, he, he takes a damage. That means all his forests are tapped out. And remember that brilliant play with the Berserks, uh, the double Berserk, actually, when I was down on, I believe, seven, was it seven? So he almost got me there, and then he played that Force of Nature. So it's actually a very, was a very close game, and now I seem to have full control. Activating my Simbat, losing a card here. Obviously hoping to draw land so I can get gain even more life from the Ivory Tower. And in this deck, I play with 25 lands so almost half of my cards are lands and that's it that's the game he says okay it doesn't make sense continue working here and i'm showing his my hand obviously i had a counter spell there for for the big threat so that's the first game won there by mono blue but it was close it was a close game so looking forward to game number two to see what's gonna what's gonna happen game number two and it's with bjorn on play and let's see what's gonna happen if i can withstand the green aggression again and there's a lot of our elves here turn number one and a desert would be nice just playing an island passing turn and there seems to be a little glitch but i see there is a um, mature's factory on the field and there was a giant grove on the lot of our elves means that i go down to 16. and it's my turn and i'm playing a simbat that's the one one creature from arabian nights that you can tap and then you get to draw your first card and if it's a land you can keep it and if it's not a land you have to discard it there's an attack from the factory meaning another two damage here and i'm already down on 14. playing a strip mine and i see that bjorn also added a scavenger folk there to the collection of creatures wonder if i'm going to strip his mistress factory or not Seems like a logical choice. He's activating it, he's attacking, and now I'm stripping. Of course, I don't have to make that decision too early. And there's another giant growth, meaning I go down to 10 life. Oh, no, 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 I'm playing a spell blast here. That's nice. And I'm activating my Simbad. As you can see, uh, there was an island there, so I could draw that extra card. And the nice thing here is because I play with 25 lands, I've got a pretty pretty nice chance of, of finding land when I'm activating my Simba, doing it again. And maybe you're wondering, okay, isn't aren't you just milling away your creatures and other cards and spells that you may need later? That is true, but in this particular case, what I'm looking for are my Maze of Ifs. I'm playing with four Maze of Ifs, and I just want to find that Maze of If or that Desert to kind of stop the pressure from these creatures. So I'm, I'm literally digging for answers here. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'm starting to lose life here. Playing an, ooh, an Urn and Jin. Uh, that's a big problem. Losing a clone there again. Not very lucky with the same bet with finding what I need. Just finding islands there. Playing a Control Magic, and this is great. So I get that Urn and Jin. So that's also kind of a problem solver here. Because I can use it to block his big creatures. Playing a hurricane, smart move, you're going on to seven and finding that maze of if. And finding that maze of if also means that I can just attack. I don't have to keep a blocker. Although, you know, it's always risky if he has a giant growth or something else. And I'm sending one back. Taking damage here, but there's a giant growth. But there's a spell blast. So that counter magic is really, really helping me here. And I'm finding a desert. So all of a sudden, my Simbad is starting to work here. Finding that Maze of If and finding that desert. And earlier, finding that island. And I'm attacking him here. And all of a sudden, he's down to 8 life. So it looks like I've kind of turned this game around. Obviously, being lucky there as well. And let's see what Bjorn can do here. And he's folding. He's saying there's nothing I can do. And you kind of know at a certain point when I have a handful of a handful of cards, I probably have some counter magic in there, so I can can take care of your uh, of the berserks in that way. 
Okay, so this was it. So it's a victory for the Mono Blue deck for the Prodigal Sorcerers. So go Timmy. Uh, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. If you would like to see more old school games, click on the playlists that are appearing right now. Please leave a comment. Tell me what you think. It's very much appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. Ik het was fikker te samba kazing.